Coming up, war in the 21st century. These are cyber soldiers. And you could be one of the casualties. They are getting hit digitally. Learn how to protect yourself online. Not just on your PC, this is also on your phone. And then, the Muslim convert and the underground Christian. His last word for me was, continue the fight, never give up. Who faced the death penalty for standing up for his faith. Very few people came out of it alive. On today's 700 Club. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 700 Club. It's the final weekend before Election Day, and both presidential campaigns will be out in force trying to get voters to the polls. The Rust Belt of America is especially critical this year. Winning Ohio and Pennsylvania would mean 38 electoral votes, and that alone could mean the difference between victory and defeat. David Brody and Jenna Browder talk to some of the volunteers as well as the voters who will be choosing our next president. Um, we're Ohio Christian University students. Near Columbus, Ohio, millennial evangelicals are on a push to educate voters and get them to the polls on Tuesday. I do want to see other Christians get a vote just because it's, it's like gives them power. Each vote will be especially crucial in Ohio with Trump and Clinton running neck and neck here. That's why the Faith and Freedom Coalition is knocking on tens of thousands of doors in this crucial area of the state. And a personal touch could be the push that some evangelical voters need to get to the ballot box. More and more people want some sort of uh, personal connection and, and uh, credible persuasion. Persuasion is cranking up on the Democrat side too. Socialist hero and former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders came to Youngstown to rally the troops at the local university. Hillary Clinton knows she needs millennials to show up, but students here don't seem too motivated. Trump's voters that are my age, they are a lot more enthusiastic than like the people that are going to be voting for Hillary. There's no doubt that Donald Trump is going to have to win here in Ohio and many of those battleground states, but at some point he's going to have to penetrate the blue wall, Hillary Clinton's blue wall. That means many of those Democrat states, including one nearby, as a matter of fact, right next door in Pennsylvania. And that's where we find my CBN News colleague, Jenna Browder. Jenna. Thanks, David. We are here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. This is a town that was once booming, but as industry moved out, so did the jobs. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are working overtime here, trying to win over blue collar working class Americans. This is probably the, the toughest election that you know I've been voting since I was 18. Mm. I'm not really, really, I don't know. I'm registered as a Republican, but right now I'm still pretty undecided. Here at the Heyday Diner, mixed feelings for the candidates. Trump knows everything was going on. He's speaking the truth to us, but Hillary knows the House. Ebony Carter seems to make up her mind on the spot. I'm just going to go with Trump because I, I like the truth and instead of this being anything with help from me. Yeah, most of it's pro-Trump, to be honest, and, and this is a pretty, it's always been a heavily Democratic area. Across town at the Press Bistro. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to vote. Rowena Claycomb says she's leaning more toward Clinton, but by no means a hardcore supporter. Donald Bonk is straight down the middle. I think each of them have proposals that could be helpful to us. His family owned a grocery store in the area for more than 40 years. 1940 was roughly our high point. We had about 60,000 people uh, in the city. Uh, we had a Bethlehem steel mill when I was in high school in 1979. We had 12,000 steel workers. We probably have about 1,500 now in various specialty mills. And that's Trump's basic message, bring back jobs. I want the America that, my, that I had when I grew up for my grandchildren. And it's one truck drivers at this rest stop are buying. Even though he's very, very wealthy, he seems like he's a blue collar guy. Quite frankly, this is going to be the biggest election since Reagan. I think you're going to see an absolute landslide. With all of the Trump pinned signs in the area, it looks good visually on the surface for the Republican ticket. But with Clinton's top notch ground game, looks can be deceiving in blue collar America, where this race could ultimately be decided. Jenna Browder, CBN News in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It's been a crazy election year, hasn't it? And I know that many people are frustrated. They've been disappointed. Some are very sure of who they're voting for and others still undecided. 
Here's the important thing. We live in a country where we have the freedom to vote. So voting is not just a privilege, it's really a responsibility. And I wanna encourage you to vote. Go make your voice be heard. Well, both Trump and Clinton are campaigning again in Pennsylvania today after going to another key state yesterday. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Terry. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have been crisscrossing the country to reach as many of those sweet key, key, key swing states as they can. One of the most important prizes, North Carolina, a state that neither is taken for granted. Ephraim Graham has that story. Both presidential candidates are hitting the same battleground states, but with very different messages. In North Carolina Thursday, Republican Donald Trump pushed to rally his base. You know, when I look at these great admirals and these great generals and these great Medal of Honor recipients behind me, to think of her being their boss? I don't think so. Polls show Trump gaining ground in the state just days before the election, but the state also has a growing African-American population and a growing number of young college-educated voters. And Hillary Clinton aimed to urge both to get out and vote with some added star power. Rapper Jay-Z today and Bernie Sanders and singer Pharrell Williams Thursday. This election is just too important. I couldn't sit on the sidelines and just be quiet. But Clinton has been hurt by questions about the FBI investigations into the Clinton Foundation and her emails, with more revelations in recent days and possibly even more ahead. Clinton is not talking about those problems as she campaigns. We are standing against the possibility of returning and normalizing discrimination. Take it seriously, my friends, because it truly is. It truly is at stake in this election. And a new face on the campaign trail as Melania Trump made her first solo appearance for her husband, taking on the issue of cyberbullying. It is never okay when a 12-year-old girl or boy is mocked, bullied, or attacked. It is terrible when that happens on the playground. And it, it is absolutely unacceptable when it's done by someone with no name hiding on the internet. We have to find a better way to talk to each other. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Thanks, Ephraim. And you can follow our election reporting online by logging on to Twitter, Facebook, and the CBN News Channel, where continuous updates and analysis began at 8 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have a special election update edition of the 700 Club Tuesday night at 11 Eastern on the ABC Freeform cable channel. You'll be able to see that online at CBNNews.com as well. Well, whoever the next president will be, he or she will face the problem of a huge national debt. It's projected to reach $20 trillion early next year. And over the next several years, it could climb much higher as interest rates start to rise again. That could mean Washington could try to cut government spending or, Gordon, they could possibly try to raise taxes. Well, it's wonderful what, what's going on in our nation today. The good news is the election is on Tuesday, and hopefully all the shouting will be over. But then we've got to face some very real pro problems. And regardless of the winner, when you look at a $20 trillion debt, you look at uh, international terrorism, you look at the huge divisions in our country today, uh, you wonder, can anyone, any human being, solve these problems? And I think the answer to that is no, they can't. Uh, we need to humble ourselves and pray and pray that God would have mercy on America. Terry? Well, up next, a new kind of warfare that requires a new kind of warrior. Countries like China and Russia and even Iran are standing up entire divisions of their military just to do cyber-based attacks. So these are cyber soldiers. We're trying to do the same thing, but we're really late to the game. Hear how we can protect our country and ourselves against cyber attacks. That's coming up.
From hacked emails to major data breaches, cyber attacks could cripple our economy and threaten national security. How serious of a problem is this, and how can you protect your personal information? Mark Martin brings us that story. October 21st, 2016. Hackers shut down half of America's internet by targeting Dyne, a company that manages key parts of the web's infrastructure. Within minutes, the cyber attack takes major websites like Twitter and Spotify offline. It's just the latest example of cyber warfare. Other major cyber hacks garnering national attention recently, the Yahoo data breach in September, WikiLeaks emails relating to Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Clinton Foundation, and the leak of roughly 20,000 emails involving the Democratic National Committee in July. Every day, whether it be a government agency, an academic institution, or a healthcare provider, they are getting hit digitally, interrogated, reconned, probed by entities out there. Now that entity could be like a little kid who's just bored. It could go all the way up to a nefarious actor or an organization in a foreign nation. It could be the foreign national government themselves. A major reason why the U.S. needs cybersecurity experts like Regent University professor Dr. Jeffrey Heyman. He believes today's worst offenders in this computer espionage are China, Russia, and North Korea. It is hard to defend when you've got billions of people in totalitarian governments who wish to do harm to democratic governments. Countries like China and Russia and even Iran are standing up entire divisions of their military just to do cyber-based attacks. So these are cyber soldiers. We're trying to do the same thing, but we're really late to the game. Our guys are really good at it, but we're not quite there yet, um, but hopefully we will be very soon. FBI Special Agent Robert Cochran tries to spread the word about cybersecurity danger to companies like Eastern Data. He said of the 14,000 agents in the FBI, 1,500 fight cybercrime a 60% increase in just the last five years. So it's a very important for us to understand that in this spectrum, which largely used to be con con controlled by business for communication capabilities, uh, now it's being militarized and governments are using it to exploit you know, what they need to. Cochran says for now, the United States is focusing on defense in this new form of warfare. I can say that the, the military uh, the United States generally looks at attacking another country as, a, as an act of war in many cases, and our military is reserved for conducting warfare. Uh, so what we've seen mostly from what I've seen in, in this area and in my relationships with the, the military is a defensive mechanisms, us, us trying to bolster up our defensive capabilities, and we work with our Department of Defense partners to do that. If cyber warfare between nation states sounds far removed, let's talk small scale. How do you protect yourself at work and at home from a cyber attack? The National Cybersecurity Alliance says one way is to practice good cyber hygiene. Keep a clean machine, right? You wanna keep all your uh, internet connected devices free from infections and malware. And that usually means, in 99% of the cases, keeping all your software up to date. And this is not just on your PC, this is also on your phone. This means operating systems. Michael Kaiser is the executive director of the National Cybersecurity Alliance. In addition to computer hygiene, he urges people to lock down the login. In other words, add an extra layer of protection beyond your password. There are a number of options, such as fingerprint scans, currently available on many smartphones and tablets. Kaiser also wants people to be cyber aware. Think about these emails that are coming into your, uh, into your inbox. Is that a link I should click on? Is that something I should open, right? That website that I've never been to before, maybe should I go to that right away or should I go somewhere else where I'm more confident and, and more trusting? And don't forget to back up critical information. When I say backup, a true backup means not a separate hard drive contained on the same system. It means a separate hard dot drive or a separate system not connected to that network. Heyman believes education is the best defense. He heads up the Regent Master's program in cybersecurity. You should have a plan for every person coming into your company, agency, whatever. They get trained on basic cybersecurity, information technology, computer science methods, defenses, common phishing techniques. The National Consumers League also helps educate consumers on cybersecurity. I think that data breaches, whether they come from a nation state or from a cyber criminal, absolutely affect all consumers, and all consumers should be concerned about this. So what kind of laws are on the books to fight cybercrime? Breo says on the federal level, the protection is surprisingly minimal. 
His organization is lobbying to change that. We'd like Congress to pass a comprehensive national data security standard that will require any business or organization that collects information about their customers to give it a reasonable level of data security. And to those who think that's overregulation on the part of the federal government, Breo offers this. I think that's certainly a, a valid concern. At the same time, I would point to all of the data breaches that happen nearly on a daily basis and the impact that's having on consumers and what consumers want. Nearly on a daily basis. It's a phrase that reflects the times in which we live and a reminder to stay vigilant. Mark Martin, CBN News, Virginia Beach and Washington. Uh, let me underline that nearly on a daily basis, the number of times that uh, supposedly secure databases have been hacked is, is staggering. And when you think that Yahoo accounts were all hacked, and so that means every email on those accounts was hacked, you look at uh, the recent revelations on email scandals in the presidential race, and and you go, what what is secure? If if those uh, emails aren't secure, then then what is secure? So please don't put anything in an email that you don't want on the front page of the newspaper. And here's here's a little simple trick that uh, may help you. It, it has to do with keeping your passwords secure. So often we use like um, names or um, quick numbers and please don't ever use password as a password. Uh, think of a sentence that's unique to you and then just take the first letter of that sentence and then add some numbers to it and maybe a symbol or two. If you, if you can remember the sentence, then you can remember the password and that will stop a, a great number of these kinds of hacks where your passwords get stolen. And think of different sentences every year and, and try to keep up with that. Uh, but in the, in the bottom line on this, if your health data is at risk, if all of your emails are at risk, if what you're doing online in terms of shopping is at risk, uh, well, it's, we're a long way from being secure. Terry? Who can remember all those passwords, I want to know? <laughs> you can remember a sentence, can't you? Well, sentence. <laughs> well, yes, I'll come up with a different sentence. For every option, mercy. Okay, <laughs> anyway, coming up, a man who was locked in prison, he was beaten and tortured, and all because of his faith. Absolutely. And the only thing that you can hear is the scream of the other people with you in the other cells. I really thought I would, I, I would die there. Watch this Christian convert's miraculous escape when we come back. Under Sharia law, women are forced to cover themselves in public and thieves can have their hands chopped off for stealing. Still, those punishments are nothing compared to what Sharia has in store for Muslim converts to another religion. Magid Shafei knows that firsthand because he was once thrown into prison and beaten within an inch of his life. They just wanted to know who was cooperating with me, who was working with me. Telling them was not an option. Simple as that. I prefer to die. Majid Shafei grew up in a prominent Muslim family in Egypt. But even at a young age, he struggled with Islamic beliefs and practices. There was a lot of violence. There was no place for forgiveness. There was no sacrifice. There was no woman rights. There was no minority rights. He was also troubled by the persecution of people in other religions, especially when he started making Christian friends in college. I saw how peaceful they are. I saw how forgiving they are. I saw the principles and the values that they have. So I didn't understand why you want to persecute people that they are that peaceful. And I needed to know what truth that these Christians have that I was not even allowed to hear. To get answers, Majid went to his Christian friend, Tamar, who in turn gave him a Bible. And the more that I read, the more that I saw this amazing Lord that came on earth to die for us, for our pain and sins and disease. And I saw all of his sacrifice, all his love. That's when I came to the conclusion, that's when I came to the revolution that that's the God that we should worship. That's the God that I want to follow. 
Majid committed his life to Jesus Christ. This feeling of freedom, this feeling of liberation, there is nothing like when you know that you are a child of God and you are not a slave. Shortly after, Majid and Tamer formed an underground organization. They used caves to hide their church services and other activities. We built one Bible school, one medical clinic, and we established you know, a newspaper asking from the Egyptian government to give us our rights. The government responded by targeting the organization. One day, Egyptian soldiers discovered one of their caves and opened fire. Majid and Tamer were there. One of the Egyptian officers aimed at me. I didn't see Tamer dead. So the officer shot, and that's when Tamer pushed me on the ground, and he took a bullet, and he died for me. And his last word for me was, uh, continue the fight, never give up. Majid escaped and continued his work. Three months later, Egyptian police forced their way into his home and arrested him. An officer came and he said, I need to know everything about you, who you are, who working with you. I told him, I don't know anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what organization. And he told me, you want to play tough? We can play tough together. I told him, tough is my middle name. You don't need to worry about that. Next day, they transferred me to Abu Zabal prison. For the locals, Abu Zabal prison is called hell on earth. Trying to get information, interrogators began systematically torturing Majid. You're underground. You are bleeding from everywhere. You are beaten. There is no even a window in your cell. It's underground. is absolute darkness. Absolute darkness. And the only thing that you can hear is the scream of the other people with you in the other cells. I really thought I, will, I, I would die there. Very few people came out with a life. Very few people. After two days, Majid feared he would betray his friends. Lying down in a pool of my own blood, this was my prayer. I told him, Lord, I want to thank you for your gift on the cross. I don't regret believing in you. You died for me, and I will live, and I will die for you. However, Lord, you made me out of flesh and blood. You know how weak I am. And my only request to you is to kill me before tomorrow morning. The next day, his captors brought in dogs. Majid braced himself for the attack. There was absolute quiet and calm. So I removed my hand away from my face, just little by little. And that's what I saw. By God, all three dogs sitting around me, none of them moved one single step. The other three dogs came, sat in the same position with one little different. The middle one took a step forward and he licked my face. I got the same message that the officers got, that maybe I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. Somebody else here with me. His interrogator returned the following day. This time, he made him an offer. He said, you tell me the name of your friends, I will release you. I will make you witness in the case, I will release you. He listed everything that any man will desire. I looked at him, I told him, oh, that's, that's a very good deal. I, I will take it. Go get me food and water, and after that, we'll talk together. He said, whatever you like, I will bring it to you. I told him, shish kebab. He went, he bring an Egyptian food, I sat down, I ate. Told me, now you tell me the name of your friends. I told him, listen, we are a big group, thousands of us. I will not remember all of us, but I can give you the name of our leader. He told me, okay, give me the name of your leader. I told him the name of our leader, Jesus Christ. If you can catch him, catch him. Retaliation was severe. Majid remembers enduring two more days of torture before losing consciousness and later waking up in a hospital. It took him months to recover, only to face charges of treason in Egypt's military court. And I will tell you what I told the judge in this day. If loving Christ and if worshiping him is a crime, I'm guilty as charge, Your Honor. They give me the death penalty. Placed under house arrest, Majid waited for his execution. He was unaware that his organization had planned a rescue. 
they came uh, with arms, they was able to attack the Egyptian soldiers, they just grabbed me. And that's when we put, put everything in the car, crossed to Alexandria. Uh, during this time, the Egyptian police put my pictures in every newspaper, in every magazine, uh, every TV shows. That's when my friends told me, you have to leave the country, you cannot stay any longer. To avoid capture, he made his way east to the port city of Taba. There, he took a jet ski and navigated his way past border patrol boats to make it safely to Israel. And I surrendered to the Israeli police. And through Amnesty International and United Nations, I was accepted as a landed political refugee. Eventually, Majid made his way to Canada, where today he leads One Free World International, a human rights organization committed to helping persecuted people worldwide. He's my Lord and my Savior, my best friend. And he walks with me wherever I go. He just walks with me. Once you know that you found him, there is nothing else matter after that. Nothing else. Once you know that you have found him, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. He is the pearl of great price. He is that treasure that you have been looking for all your life. Would you like to meet him? Would you like to meet him today? What, what Majid found, you can find. How? Just by asking. Just what he did. He went on a search. He says, I want to know. I want to know God. He went to a Christian. He got a Bible. He started reading it. But then the transition happened and he realized, I need to pray, I need to ask, I need to receive. Now the Bible says that when you seek me with your whole heart, with everything, then you will find me. Now you can do that and you can do that right now. This isn't something where you play games. This isn't something where you do it as a joke. This is something that if you mean it with all of your heart, he'll answer, he'll come to you. And that peace that he showed Majid where you're, you're, you're never alone, he's always with you, he'll never forsake you. You'll have that and you'll know for certain that he is your savior. All you have to do is ask. It's a very simple prayer, Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, if you can really forgive me, if you really want a relationship with me, if you really are my Messiah, could you show up for me? Could you save me? And if you pray that right now, he'll answer and you'll meet him and you'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is your savior, he is your God. Now, if you want this, just bow your head with me. Let's pray a very simple prayer and let Jesus do all the rest. Pray with me. Jesus, that's right, just say his name. Say this prayer out loud. Jesus, I come to you and I want to know that you're real. I want to know that you can forgive me that you can set me free from all my past, from all the things that I've done wrong. So Jesus, if you'll do this for me, if you'll show up for me, if you'll forgive me, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer. Forgive my sin, come into my heart, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that your presence would overwhelm them and fill them and be all around them. Do it, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody else know. 
The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. All you have to do is make a toll-free call, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got something free for you. It's a CD teaching called uh, New Day. In there, you, you'll learn about what Christians believe. You'll learn what you do now. You'll learn how to live a Christian life. It's all free, no financial obligation at all. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call and ask for it. It's our, our privilege to send it to you. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry, over to you. Still ahead, a young mom is paralyzed by pain for three and a half years. All I did was sit on the couch and complain and cry and just sit in pain. My whole body hurt. Watch what happens after her doctor sends her home to die. And welcome back to the 700 Club. The Archbishop of Canterbury has spoken out against persecution of Christians in the Middle East and other parts of the world. Speaking at an interfaith gathering in Abu Dhabi, he said Christianity is both the largest and most persecuted faith, and he called the situation, quote, intolerable. Operation Blessing is helping people who were used as sex slaves by ISIS. Two years ago, ISIS attacked Christian and Yazidi minorities in Iraq. They captured a young woman and her four children and killed her husband. She was sold multiple times as a sex slave among ISIS fighters. And her nine-year-old daughter was abused by a Saudi man for many weeks. But that mother kept track of her children while in captivity, and they all eventually escaped. Operation Blessing is helping her and 110 other women and girls who are former ISIS sex slaves with food, supplies, and other resources. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website, ob.org. Gordon and Terry are back with more of the 700 Club. It is coming up right after this. Mr. Wu has been ostracized all of his life because of a disability. So when his son was born with a cleft palate, this father was determined to get help for him. And yet he had no way to pay for the surgery that his child needed until people like you made that possible. Mr. Wu was born with a spinal deformity, so he stands only four feet tall. He's an outcast in most circles, but to his wife and children, he's their hero. He'd do anything for his family, especially his son, Chen Ting, who was born with a cleft lip and palate. I thought, like father, like son, we are both disabled. People look down on me, and now they will look down on Chen Ting. I could not have that. Mr. Wu did farm work to raise money for surgery for his son. When that wasn't enough, he did odd jobs in the city. There were times I didn't even make a penny, and we have to eat other people's leftovers. Feeding Chen Ting was a challenge. His cleft lip was so severe that food would lick out from his nose. All you could see was his cleft lip. Soon what Mr. Wu dreaded happened and people started making fun of Chen Ting. We were scolded and kicked and pushed away. I knew it would be impossible for Chen Ting to ultimately find a job or get married. People would be scared of him his whole life. My heart ached for my little boy. There was nothing I could do. Then Mr. Wu heard that CBN was sponsoring cleft lip and palate surgeries in his area. He signed Chen Ting up right away. And the surgery? was a success. My son is cured. The surgery totally transformed him. He looks like he's a brand new boy. Now, Chen Ting can eat without trouble, and no one will make fun of him. And he laughs all the time. As a father, I'm so relieved. CBN saves Chen Ting and helped my entire family. You are my hero. Isn't it great to know that you and I can have that kind of an impact on the need of someone on the other side of the globe without ever leaving our living rooms? 
I mean, that's pretty amazing. And why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? To make that kind of a difference in someone's life is just incredible. What did it cost to make that happen? Well, 700 Club members made that happen. So when you join the 700 Club and we all link arms together, that's how that kind of answer comes into the life of someone in need. And joining the 700 Club is 65 cents a day, $20 a month. We want to invite you to do that right now. You go to your phone, call our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. And will you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. I love this. It means your bank does all the work. It's wonderful. You don't have to remember anything or have any materials on hand. Our way of saying thank you for doing that is to send you Power for Life teachings. I love these. You're going to get one of these every month. This is teaching that we receive here at CBN, and we'd like to share it with you. So this is our gift and our way of saying thank you for calling and for using Pledge Express. So let us hear from you today. 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Well, up next, crippling pain makes a woman unable to eat, and doctors can help. I had one doctor say that my body was just shutting down. They didn't know why, and just go home and die. See how she's supernaturally healed in an instant. That's coming up next. Barbara Oden loves to drive her children around in their utility vehicle just for the fun of it. But not long ago, Barbara was confined to her couch in tremendous pain. After three years with no relief, Barbara was so discouraged that she prayed to die. All I did was sit on the couch and complain and cry and just sit in pain. My whole body hurt. In 2012, Barbara Oden started having intense stomach pains and couldn't keep any food down. Within a week, the pain became so unbearable, she went to the emergency room. Doctors diagnosed her with acid reflux and gave her medication, but it didn't work. So I ended up suffering from terrible migraines where I would lose my balance. Vision would blur, which made my stomach sicker. Barbara's symptoms continued to get worse. Over the next two years, doctors and specialists ran a multitude of tests trying to determine a cause. They checked me for cancer, they checked my thyroid, done three uh, upper endoscopies, um, a colonoscopy, uh, and they still could not find anything at all. Unable to eat anything except crackers and water, she lost a third of her size and went down to 107 pounds. My face aged quite a bit. I just looked very deathly ill. My bones were poking everywhere. Just, you could see my collarbone poking out. Very crazy, crazy looking. What bothered her most was not being able to care for her children properly. I felt really sad that I didn't really have my mama there. I mean, even, when, but whenever I was sick, while she was sick, she forced herself to get up and make me soup too. It would almost make me cry. Like, I knew that she was suffering, I would still go over there and tell her how much I love her. I love my kids very much. And every day I would wake up, all right, I'm going to fight this. This is, this is going to be the day that I'm going to be better. And just to deal with the same suffering. In March of 2015, Barbara had to quit her job. Then she received a grim prognosis. I had one doctor say that my body was just shutting down. They didn't know why and just go home and die. And I thought, well, this is it. I'm 107 pounds. I have literally no energy. I am I felt death inside of me. Barbara surrendered everything to God. And I prayed to God to just let me die. I couldn't handle it anymore, watching my kids watch me suffer. The next day, Barbara was watching TV when she came across the 700 Club. I had just eaten. I think it was a piece of bread, and I was doubled over in pain on the couch. I knew it was a Christian channel, but I had never watched it before. At the end of that show, it said, Someone else, you have a problem, uh, an esophageal problem, and it has something to do with your digestion. God's healing that condition for you. You'll not have any of those complications again. It was like somebody was saying, hey, wake up. This is for you. You're healed. It was like a burst of energy, which all I could 
say would be like the Holy Spirit inside of me. Um, I felt happy. I felt, I felt healed. Barbara did something she wasn't able to do in three and a half years. I immediately went and made myself something to eat just to test the waters. <laughs> and I didn't have the stomach pain. My body felt normal, like, I, like as if I had never been sick. Barbara is back to her normal weight and in good health and taking care of her family again. You keep all faith and hope in God because He is the healer. And the doctors can only do so much. And then there's God. God's right there. He's got His hand on you. And you will be healed. The absolute key to miracles, have faith in God. What he said he will do, what he had people write down he would do, he will perform it. He watches over his word to perform it. Now, we've got another miracle here, and this one's amazing, too. Jenny from Kentucky, she writes in, I was watching Terry and Gordon on Friday, October 21, 2016, and as always, I was praying along, hoping I would be called on to be healed. I have scoliosis and have full-length rods placed in my back 31 years ago. But above and below, the rods are still curved and cause a great deal of pain in my neck on a daily basis. It was agony for as long as I can remember years. One vertebra in particular was half inch to the right, almost on my shoulder, and it hurt so badly. So I was hoping and praying when the very last thing Terry said was curvature of the spine. Well, I kept my eyes closed and started crying and praying that she was talking about me. I slowly reached my hand up to my neck and I couldn't believe it. It wasn't bulging where it always had. I ran my fingers along my neck bone and it was straight as it could be. I felt like someone else's neck. I turned my head left and it turned so far Further than it ever did, I turned to the right and the same thing. I'm so thankful and always amazed by God's love and power. Praise Him, I'm healed. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Amazing. God is good. Well, look, <laughs> listen to this. This is Robert, who's from West Laco, Texas. He had been suffering with ear pain for 50 years. He was a Navy nuclear submarine scuba diver in the Vietnam War. The dr diving damaged his right ear, causing continual pain. He went to a Veterans Administration physician, but nothing could be done for him except to give him prescription painkillers. One day, he was watching this program, and he heard you, Gordon, give this word of knowledge. Someone with problems in your right ear Ear, recurring deep infections, discharges out of that ear. God is able to heal it and make it so it never comes back again. You are restored now in Jesus' name. He received the healing. He is pain-free. No more yeah. ear problems. Yeah, 50 God. years. Yeah, God. Amen. Realize that He knows your name. Uh, he knows your name. And this word is for you. It's for all of us. That by His stripes we were healed. Let's, let's all say that wonderful song. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Now, let's just hold on to that word, and we're going to pray, and let's just bless him for what he has already done, and let's receive what he has for us today. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift these needs to you. Those who are in pain, who are suffering, those who have disease. And Lord, we know that you number the very hairs on their head. You know them by name. You died for them. You love them so much, you died for them. And so these diseases, these sicknesses, nothing is too big for you. Nothing is too small. You want to take care of every need. So, Lord, we lift them to you now, and we ask for healing. We ask that you would stretch forth your hand to do miracles, to do wonders, to watch over your children with miracle power. You always respond to faith. And so, Lord, we look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith, and we ask 
that your children be healed now in Jesus name. There's someone you've had a deterioration of the bone in, in both jaws and it's very painful. You've got pain, you've got numbness, you've got this tingling and it's difficult for you to eat anymore. It's difficult for you to chew and God is healing all of that. He is able to restore bone. He's able to restore cartilage. He's able to give it complete normal function, which you are having right now. Just praise him for what he's doing and go test it out and realize you have been healed. Terry? There's someone else. You have these chronic migraines. It's not like it's sinus related or just allergies. It's like a band and it goes all the way from the front of your head around to the back. Then you'll have it again the next day and the next day. You just never seem to be free from it. Today, Jesus Christ sets you free. Lift up your hands and receive it. You'll not have it again. Someone with problems with your left hand, a constriction in the tendons, and it causes your hand to come in like a claw and just shrink in like a claw. God's healed that. He's restoring uh, the tendon. He's making it new again. Just stretch out your hand and be healed now in Jesus name. And someone else you saw that last story. There's a problem you have with the, the soft tissue lining of your stomach and it also makes eating very difficult for you. God is healing that for you. You feel a warmth in your abdomen and you're not going to have a problem with it again in Jesus name. Be healed. And there's someone you, you've had um, an ear problem and it's primarily in your right ear and in the eustachian tube uh, draining that ear. It was caused by diving years ago and you're in constant pain with it. It just recurs and recurs and recurs. God's healing it mm -hmm. right now. Just re be restored now. Someone else is saying, please say tailbone. You had an injury years ago also, but as you've uh, grown and aged over the years, it's just so painful. God is setting that all in order for you, straightening things out, realigning everything, and that pain is gone in Jesus' name. And someone else, you've had cracked ribs on both the left and the right side, and it's uh, real painful uh, in the right side underneath your heart. And you just say, please say that. Please, please release me from this pain. Mm -hmm. God's heard your cry. He's releasing it now, restoring you now in Jesus' name. And someone else, you have a chronic case of eczema. I mean, it's very, um, it's not just painful and frustrating, but it's also embarrassing to you. God is healing that for you. It's just going to slowly fade and go away and not return. And someone else, you've got problems with uh, both eyes. Uh, it's a recurring eye infections, creates a film over your eye. Mm -hmm. God's taking all of that away for you Jesus. and just healing it now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report. We want to let the world know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still heals the sick and he loves to do it. And we want to share those wonderful stories. So call us 1-800-700-7000. And if you need prayer, we're here for you. We believe in prevailing prayer, the prayer that gets an answer. So if you want us to stand with you, you in prayer, it's our honor and our privilege to do so. All you have to do is call. We're here seven days a week, 24 hours a day. 1-800-700-7000. Now we've got some time for some email questions. This one's appropriate. This is from Christine, who's from South Africa. She says, when you pray for the sick and you start talking about specific individuals and the healing of their illnesses, how does God give this information to you? Do you audibly hear his voice or does he show you in your mind a picture of the person and their situation? Well, Terry, I'm going to turn that on you. You just had two marvelous miracles. One, yeah. um, what happens with you? You know, it's different, uh, different times. Sometimes it's a picture of someone. Sometimes, sometimes a, a, like a symptom comes to mind. And I have learned to just trust God and say it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm given you the faith that God's intended, then that healing comes. Um, and, and sometimes as I start to talk about the symptom, I get more and I don't even understand sometimes what it's about. I'm yeah, just, that happens. I get this running narrative yeah. where you just start and then suddenly you get more and then it's, you know, it's, it's sort of like you're just repeating what you hear. Uh, I, I will get physical manifestations in my body of the pain, uh, which I don't like, but uh, <laughs> it, it, when I announce it and pray for it, it leaves. And so, great. Um, 
uh, I've I've had that for a long time, and it, it that's wonderful. Then I'll get uh, specific pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll see people. Sometimes I'll things. see environments, and then I'll get names uh, for. It's sort of what what will trigger. I view it as what will trigger someone to have faith to believe. Yeah. And if I can do that, uh, that would be great. Well, we leave you these words from Psalm 20. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. And realize you have a purpose. You have a destiny. And God wants to watch over that. He wants you to fulfill what he created you to do. God bless you. We'll see you again.